What's so important about this photo and why did I pick it first? There's a rich photographic history in Tasmania. BD Studio has thousands of historic photos and the collection's been handed down to me. Let me show you some things about Tasmania that have been forgotten. G'day and welcome to Forgotten Tasmania. In this episode, I'm talking about a photo that we call number 936. From the recreation in the previous episode, I can now say that it was taken from the roof of 16 Elizabeth Street. Measuring the shadows, the sun is 63 degrees high. The trees are out. People are wearing less clothes. It's summer. The GPO clock says 11.50 a.m. Historian Colin Dennison has dated the photo. So now I can say we have a weekday, mid-November 1948 at 11.50 a.m. That's pretty precise given that the bag with the negative just had Elizabeth Street Hobart on it. Elizabeth Street was named in 1811 by Governor Macquarie after his wife Elizabeth. In colonial times arriving by ship you disembarked and walked into Hobart on Elizabeth Street so that's why it's the main street of Hobart. I reckon his wife ruled the roost or at least it was she was the most important thing in his life. His kings and queens and other dignitaries they got lesser streets named after them. We have many photos of Elizabeth Street taken at different times, but I chose this one from 1948 to go in the exhibition at the Hobart Town Tea Rooms, which is in Macquarie Street, and Macquarie Street of course was named after Governor Macquarie. This is the tea rooms behind me thanks to the magic of green screen. I picked this photo because it was taken from the roof of what's now the council building, and it also shows the town hall where the council meets. And the reason I picked that to go in the tea rooms because the tea rooms is run by Ron Christie, who was the former Lord Mayor of Hobart. So the photo linked with Ron's old job, if you like. By the way, he makes a great scone. The exhibition is ongoing, so if you're in Hobart, drop in for tea and scones. And there's about 20 of our photos on the wall to enjoy while you're having your tea and scones. When my grandfather Arch took this photo, the building was the Hydro headquarters. The Hydro built dams on the west coast for electricity. We had electricity generation on the west coast from the 1880s. This is something that's been forgotten. We had electric trams, trains and trolley buses. A proud and capable public transport system based on electric vehicles more than 100 years before Elon Musk. In 1905, there was a company that wanted to make zinc in Tasmania using massive amounts of electricity. They started a hydro scheme in the Great Lakes but they went broke in 1914 and the government took over the scheme and the Hydroelectric Department was born. In 1929, the Hydroelectric Commission became the Hydroelectric Corporation and was given far-reaching powers to exploit Tasmania's waterways to generate electricity. Some would say they were a bit of a de facto government. In the 1980s, the Hydro tried to dam the Franklin River and opposition to that dam started the Modern Greens political party, which spread all over Australia and became the third biggest political party. I recall having lunch in the Hydro Cafe, partly because it was cheap being government subsidised and partly because the sight of beard wearing greenies in the Hydro Cafe upset the Hydro so much. In fact my friend Brian Dimmick was questioned by police after the Hydro building got flooded by sprinklers and they blamed one particular greenie that was seen casing the place on a regular basis every weekday at lunchtime. Back to the photograph and the next thing that strikes me is the GPO or the General Post Office built in 1905. The foundation stone was laid by the Duke of York, the man who would go on to become King George V. Funnily enough the federal government would not fund this building so they raised the money by public subscription. The bells were made in Melbourne by Fritz Ziegler who also made the clock in the Palfreyman building in North Hobart. My photographer and best friend Jim is related. Jim's the grandson of the son in Palfreyman and Son Chemists. So you know that's Hobart, everybody is connected. Roald Amundsen, the first man to the South Pole, sent his famous telegram to the King of Norway from this very post office. I love that place. I've had a private post office box number 1339 there since I was a teenager. I still have it today, it's been a constant in my life. My postal address has never changed although I've moved houses quite a few times. The clock on the GPO says 11.50, that's 10 minutes to midday, giving us the time for the original photograph. On the left is the Colonial Mutual Life building, with the lovely Gothic grotesques, no not gargoyles, on the roof of the building. This was started in 1934 and finished in 1936. I really want to get on the roof of that building and recreate another forgotten story. You can see the Ambassador, I'm assuming that's some sort of hotel, the Kodak building and all the buildings in what's now Elizabeth Mall more trams, lots of people, lots of cars. There's a lot going on in this photograph. 
Franklin Square is totally obscured by trees, so there must have been a lot more trees and vegetation there than there is today. There's also a couple of huge trees outside the Town Hall building. The big thing you see, or rather don't see, in this photograph is the AMP building, which is missing because it wasn't built until 1968. And of course the buildings at 22 Elizabeth Street, or the so-called ANZ Centre, that's decades away from being built in this photograph. And that's why this is one of my favourite photos, just because it shows so much of the main street of Hobart and the activity, uh, you know, the transport, everything about that era. You know, it's just a beautiful photograph to look at. There's so many more amazing photos and I just can't wait to show them to you. Please subscribe to this channel, that helps other people find out about it and it helps with the um, YouTube ratings which again promotes the channel and ultimately provides a revenue stream for the channel. So really important that you subscribe to it. If you've got something to say or you want to know something, hit me up in the comments. Uh, always read the comments, always interested in what you've got to say. Thanks very much and I'll see you next time.